is above, so maybe, maybe that would be the... Is that the better approach? <laughs> wow. All right. What are you looking for? Where are you looking? To him. To him. Doreen says up. Elaine says inside. And I think both those approaches are very appropriate. Or all three of them, actually, because the whole source of the whole source for mankind is only found one place. The, all the answers are found in Christ. Simply put, we can divide them up, we can dissect them, we can pick it up and look underneath them, but in reality, everything that man needs is found in Christ. Simple as that. Today's topic, seeking those things which are above, and the question for each of us now, and as we conclude this morning together, where is my focus? Paul tells us to focus today, where to look today. Colossians 3, 1 through 4, and I admit I have added a word to each verse. Today, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Verse 2, today set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Verse 3, today, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Verse 4, tomorrow, when Christ who is our life today shall appear, then we shall also appear with him in glory. Our first step today and every day of our lives is to affirm and agree with Paul, we are risen with Christ. We are. It's already happened. It's a fact. We are. Colossians 2.12 says, We are today buried with him in baptism, wherein also today you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, God who has raised him from the dead. If he's raised from the dead, he took us with him. You say, well, I'm right here on planet Earth. Let me say this. Can you give me uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, Bill? <clears throat> We've been here multiple, multiple times. We'll be, probably be back here again this morning. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. In vines, that is one to the exclusion of any other. One is one. To divide one, you have two. To think in terms of not being one with Christ, you have to divide that. Which is right? Your thought processes or this word? The cereal box or the word of God? If I am one spirit with him, then these verses that we have just read becomes more real to us. Back to Colossians 2.12. Buried with him in baptism. Yes, and amen. Wherein also you are, you are 
you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who raised him from the dead. How do you see yourself this morning? How do I see myself? Do I see myself as one? Spirit with him? Say, how can how can this be? Why would he take me? Thirteen? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen? How old are you? Thirteen. How could he take one at thirteen and raise him? How can he take one of us at somewhere in our seventies or our nineties or or 40s or 50s or 20s or, or, or. The same transaction that raised Jesus from the dead raised us. The same, he give us, he give us a, a new birth. He made us one with him. Not in my whole being, but one inside of me. One spirit with him. One, one. I divide that, that's two. One. You say, how did he do that? I don't know. All I know is I have the word of God to say it so. And as I look to him, I realize it was no good thing in me that caused that to happen. Not a one. Not a one. What did you do? I chose him as Lord. He chose to raise me. I think the time has passed to think in terms that that when we were born into this family, we barely got in. Uh, Bill, let's take a look at Romans 5.15 in the Amplified Version. I trust I'm right. I trust that this is the right verse. Uh, Romans 5.15 in the Amplified Let me read it to you first in King James. This verse was a mystery for me. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. Now, I looked at that verse, I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. One day, I picked up the Amplified and read this. God's free gift of Jesus Christ is not at all to be compared to the trespass. It is out of all proportion to the fall of man. I am, the change is so dramatic from this verbiage to what I was thinking in those days, it's just been an awesome, awesome thing. God's free gift of Jesus Christ. When I made him Lord, I was born from above. I not only was born from above, I joined him. He took me with him, placed me with him at the right hand of the Father. True, my physical body is on planet Earth. True, my mental makeup is right here with me. But inside me, my spiritual supernatural condition is with him. He he has redeemed me beyond, out of all proportion to the fall of man. The fall of man brought death. 
the birth and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the suffering of him and his death, brought me life. Not just life, but life as God has it. Eternal life. Life, life that is everlasting, eternal, and forever existing. I and all who come this way is already qualified forever. Now, the issue is to get it from here into the rest of our personal lives and into the lives of others. The good news. For if many died through one man's falling away, his lapse, his offense. Did many die because of Adam? That's who he's talking about. Did many die? Mankind dies because of one man's offense. Been going on for generations, 4,000 years, 5,000 years, whatever it is. Wow. Much more profusely, much more beyond, out of measure of that which we have just described, did God's grace and the free gift that comes through the undeserved favor of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound and overflow to and for the benefit of many. That makes that verse rather plain, doesn't it? I'm just not in this kingdom. I'm in this kingdom out there. My life identifies with his life in the kingdom. Your life identifies with his life in the kingdom. You say, for real, yes. How else do I explain this? If we've been risen with Christ, which the scripture says we have, through the faith of the operation of God that raised Christ from the dead, if a person, hang on, if a person doesn't believe Christ was raised from the dead, they can't be either. Do I need to repeat that? <laughs> Romans 10 9 says this if you sh confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead you will be what? Saved. saved a young woman who led a rather varied lifestyle was standing in church I was invited to just go talk to her. And out of the conversation, she could see she had not been what God wanted her to be, and how was she going to be saved? How? She couldn't see it happening. Has any of us drawn limits on the Word of God? Have we placed limits on it because we see ourselves as something other than how he looks at us? Hmm? I went to school with this girl. Standing there that day, I give her, shared with her Romans, and the Spirit of God shared with her Romans 10, 9. Called her by name, probably. Said, have you confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus? Have you made him Lord? Yes. Called her by name. Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? She says, oh yes, I believe that. I said, read the end of the verse. Read the end of the verse. The end of the verse says, Thou shalt be saved. And you can see the light go on. See, now we're past her past. Now we're dealing with the now. 
And the now says that she believed in her heart, confessed him as Lord, believed that he was raised from the dead. She was saved. What transpired in that moment of time? She became God's child. She had rights to all the inheritance that he placed within her, that he places within man. Past was no more. Now is the time. These stories don't end, folks. They, they're like living stories. I got a call to go see your dad in the hospital. He was somewhat the same. But you know what? Jesus met him there. He, actually, he was to the point where he was gone, so, so close to being uh, dying. Nobody could talk to him, and family couldn't raise him. Uh, I went back to see him. They said, he's talking to nobody. I said, can I go in? So I went in and called him by name. And you know what? I got to talk to him. Life. Life continues. Same kind of life speaks to one another. Death has to bow to life. Spiritual death is no more. Spiritual life is the ongoing inheritance. She was born from the dead. So too was her father. I got a call from her. And she could barely hear her. And she was leaving this world. But she wanted to I basically say she was going out in victory. This is some years later. I hadn't talked to her in years. But what is it? There is, a, there is a sharing in the family of God. There is a communication in the family of God. When life speaks to life, it's an awesome thing to be a part of a spiritual birth. Could you make it happen? No, sir, I could not. There's no good thing that I could do. Jesus did it all. But I could carry the story. He's told us to do that. From death, we're raised or born to resurrected life, a glorified life, never to die again. The result is thou shalt be saved, made whole. Uh, some key Bible words states this, the state of well-being, entrance to the kingdom of God, and the blessings thereof. The results are we're saved to the uttermost. Now, how does that word go down with us? Save to the uttermost. You read it? Hebrews 7.25. That wherefore we're able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him. He ever lives to make intercession for us. Did we see him? He's interceding for me. He's interceding for Jace. He's interceding for Bug. He's interceding for you. Me. Hmm. Save to the uttermost. You didn't just get in. You didn't just get in. You're just not waiting for eternity. Your eternity has already begun. It is now. Eternal life has begun at birth, new birth. Already happening. Supernatural life has already begun in you, in me. Do I want to live it? Do I want to see it express? I'm going to think about the things that are above. Saved to the uttermost, completely, perfectly, and utterly, all respects. All are those that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for him. You and your no born spirits are raised or born again from above with resurrected life, glorified life, never to die again. Now, are we ready to start this message? 
because most of this has been ad lib up to this point. Okay? Wow. <laughs> I, was, I was just thinking this morning, I, my mind was drifting back to the days where I, I can still walk, I can still remember walking out of the brush at um, Rushford Church, set up on a hill, and walking into the church, on the way to the church, and they said, are you ready? I said, I've got five minutes worth. And that was good for an hour. And he said that too, as he was going in, that'd be good for an hour. But it was not anything that was written down, it was spontaneous that the Spirit would put in there and you just let it go. I was thinking about that. That's kind of fun. You know, it's kind of, kind of neat to just get to be an impromptu spokesperson for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He sticks it in and you let it out. <laughs> Amen. All right, so now let's find witnesses that testify to these astounding words as raised. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, saying this. And when, even when ye were dead in sins, he quickened you and made you alive, made you alive together in union with Christ. By grace, unmerited favor, you are saved, made whole, and hath, hath. You got that? Is that past tense? Hath, past tense. It's already happened as far as God's concerned. Hath raised us up together in union with and made us sit together in union with in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Has it happened? It happened, hasn't it? It has happened. That's where we function from. You see, don't bother telling me I haven't seen it happen. This tells me it happened. Wow. And... So something follows the statement that we just made. And made us alive with the same life. Past tense, raised us up together in union with and made us sit together in union with in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Noting our joining, our union, and fixed position and authority in Christ. We've already did 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Therefore, where one is, those who dwells and abides the other must be with the other. Where Jesus is, if he's one spirit, we are one spirit with him. Must be, or we're two. Yet he says we're one. Who do I believe? Huh? Ah. Do, can you explain it? No. Can you accept it? Yes. Yes. Therefore, where one is, there also dwells and abides the other. One cannot be divided without becoming two. Where Christ is, we are joined as one spirit, seeking the things which are above. Where's our focus? Now, transformation continues. We're not only raised, but we're raised with resurrection life. Romans 8, 10 and 11 saying this. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I'm going to tell you up front, I don't think we've already grasped the whole of the fact of what righteousness is. Studying this week, I just seen more of it and seen it come alive. Some of it we'll talk about next week. Bring your buddies with you, okay? But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead does what? Dwells in us. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. That's what it says. 
I'm not adding to. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. This is who and what he's made you to be. Yes, and amen. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. Powerful. I will tell you this. You can read through the New Testament, and if you want, I can give you references. If you've got a pencil and want to jot them down, I'll do it right now. I said the Spirit raised you from the dead, and that's true. Uh, that's Romans 8, 11. We just was there. God raised him from the dead in Ephesians 1, 17, 19 through 21. Jesus raised himself from the dead in John 10, 17 and 18. He said, he said this, and this, this in itself is powerful, this, this life that is in him. He says, I have power because it's been ordained and orchestrated and given to me from the Father. I have power to lay my life down and I have power to take it again. Woo! Woo! I am one in spirit with him who has power to lay his life down, has power to take it again. Do you expect that to happen? To you? No. If I'm still alive when he comes, I'm going to have a new body. He's got one glorified. But we'll get to that along the way here. Because again, it's, these are important truths. These are, these are things from above that has been orchestrated by God himself. Wow. In other words, resurrection power, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, is at home or abides in you. When you face circumstances, don't face it as if you're by yourself or you're inadequate. You are inadequate by yourself, but you're not by yourself. So he makes you adequate with more than enough, much more. Wow. The transformation also contains glory today and tomorrow. Glory, you've heard it before. Doxa, Vine's expository dictionary says this, glory is used of the nature and acts of God in self-manifestation. What he essentially is and does and is exhibited in whatever way he reveals himself. Therefore, Jesus giving us the same glory that his father gave him means he has given us the same glory that the father gave him. <laughs> That's not difficult, is it? I don't know if that's, I tell you, it's there just throughout the afternoon. I just say, Father, thank you for the glory that Jesus gave me and has stored in me. Just say it. You're, all you're doing is quoting the word of God, agreeing. I agree with him. That's a good person to agree with. He's unchangeable. You're not agreeing with your mate. You're not agreeing with your neighbor. You're agreeing with the Son of God. Amen. Well, Lynn, tell me some more. I'm going to. I'm going to. He, <laughs> oh, yes, I am. Second uh, Peter 1.4, I don't know whether we have it in the machine or not. But here's what it says in a nutshell. He has given us exceeding great and precious promises that we are made partakers, coenius, in, in oneness, partners of the divine nature by divine birth. I am a natural, supernatural branch, whereby are giving unto us, we us, exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers, in oneness of the divine nature. You say, I doesn't always appear that I am manifesting the divine nature. I'd say that's probably true. Did you think I'm weak? No. What I'm saying is, 
we need to allow the, the expression of an upward look, not a downward look. We need to express of things at the right hand of the Father rather than the things you see on this earth. Things on this earth is not, needs, needs help. Okay? Does need help. Okay, great, exceeding, and great and precious promises. We are made partakers of the divine nature, having like precious faith, having escaped the crush of the world. In verse, uh, verse 1, I think, uh, it would say we have the like precious faith with Peter. Peter have faith? Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have attained, what? Like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. You have already, that, that faith is already in you. Wow. It's been gifted to you. Back in verse 4, if we finished it, the power that comes with it has enabled us to be followers to walk in unity. John 17, 21 speaking this way, uh, saying this. I'll wait for it. For they all may be one. As a, Let me just ask you a very simple question. Is the Father and Jesus one? Is that what it says? That they all may be one in us, Father. I... They all may be one as thou, Father, art in me. They're one. That they also may be one in us. Ooh. Remember, you divide one, you got what? Math question. You divide one, you got good going. Two. He says we're one. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now let's go to John's, continue and look at, there is reasons why there are separations in the body of Christ, but there is no excuses. Okay, John 17, 22 and 23. This is Jesus talking. If you want to look it up, you can take a note. John 17, about verse 4 and 5, Jesus is telling the Father, he says, the glory that I had with you, I want back. The glory I had with you before the foundation of the world, I want it back. He laid it aside to come as the Son of Man. But he functioned pretty good, didn't he? Functioned pretty good. So here's now he's praying. And he's also going to include a personal testimony of Jesus' gift to us of his glory. But he's sharing the information with his Father. Now look here. The glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Have you got glory on board? <laughs> that they may be one. Even as we are one, I and them, thou and me, that they be made what? Perfect, complete, in one. Does that mean without any little knobbies that keep catching? Per that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. I think that is very neat. Hang on. There's more. Romans 8.30 says, saying this. Moreover, whom he did predestinate or foreknow, them he also called or invited. And whom he called and invited, them he also justified, made innocent. And whom he justified, made innocent. What does that say? Somebody give me the last four words. Them he also glorified. So, hang on. I'm already, in my spirit, glorified. 
Is that what he's telling me? Whom he called, then he also just, are you innocent? <laughs> yes, innocent. And, wh and whom he justified or made innocent, them he also glorified. Isn't that amazing? Amazing, isn't it? Where have we been? What have we been eating? Huh? Oh, my, my, my. Already, I admit this hasn't happened in my flesh yet. The manifestation is still off in the future. But our new spirits right now are just as Jesus is in heaven. Now, let me ask this question. Because we've been talking up to this point about the first step. So now I ask you this question. Do you have the first step forever settled? Do you have the first step forever settled? Okay. Then on to the second step today. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. You seek to search, to find, to discover, have revealed to you. You are set, you're determined. Be determined, be intentional, be fixed, be in a state of readiness, be persistent to seek things, to set your affection on things, on things above, not on things below. You say, I got to face these things below. Okay? I do. But take time to seek the things which are above. Don't let today's things overrule and take the priority. You don't know what I'm facing. Hello? Life. But I like to think in life. He has answers for and solutions for, and I still got time to seek and to set. You see, the distractions are below. They're in an opposite direction, and I don't have eyes on both sides of my head. I have to choose. You have to choose. Focus on one or the other. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Most of you can quote it. Probably most of you can quote most of these verses this morning. But God says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Now, which are you going to choose? Life or death? Tell me. Are you going to choose life or death? Life. life. You're going to choose blessing or cursing? Notice, you made choices. You chose life, you chose blessing. All right. That's good observations, because he's, that's what he tells us to do. Therefore, God says, choose life. <laughs> that's not very complicated, is it? Choose life, that both I and thy seed may live. Mm -mm -mm. The eternal realities of above. Meditate, think on. Should be the norm for all New Testament believers. To be occupied with Christ and his purposes, to release the resurrection power of Jesus into our physical lives. This is one of Jesus' great grandfather's favorites. I'm going to read. That's who he was, wasn't he? Great, great. This is one of your great. I'm great, aren't I? Okay, I just give away my esteemed privilege. Your great, great grandfather, I have no idea how many times I heard him quote Philippians 4 8. All right, here's what it says. Now you, as we read this, see what you've been saying and what you've been thinking on. Compare it to these words right here. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Are you thinking on the true things? Whatsoever things are honest. Have you been thinking on that or lies? Whatsoever things are just. I know they lie. 
You hear them. But I choose to think upon the things that are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. What do you meditate on? Wow. Those things. We're going to take time for the third step today before communion. And that third step is verse 3. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. The hidden life. Once the stone was placed against the tomb, the world never saw him again. Yet for 40 days after the stone was rolled away, he revealed himself to his disciples and taught them. Then taken up in a cloud as the disciples seen him go, so will he come again. Revelations 1, 7 says, Ever I will see him. Only his people saw him go. He comes back, ever I will see him. How that's going to happen? But he says it will happen. I believe it will happen. Wow. Meantime, we seek the unseen things above and fellowship with the unseen God. The world thinks it's fanatical. They are filled with doubt and unbelief along with a healthy portion of rebellion. The hidden life causes fruit on the branch of yourself that is seen. Fruit on the branch is due to the unseen life contained in the branch. Nothing is more satisfying than living a hidden, secret life from the unseen source. God the Father, through the Son, by the Spirit, through the root, up through the vine, out to the branch. All fellowship with our Lord is unseen, but results in victory and blessings that are seen. Our experience. Wow. 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now, today, are we the sons of God? Are we sons of God? Now, today, we are the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, and we shall see him as he is. Meantime, Christ is the way, the door to the spiritual, supernatural treasure. Colossians 2, 3, in whom in Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Some future tomorrow, our last steps on this present earth, when Christ who is our life today shall appear, and we, and ye, then shall ye also appear with him in glory tomorrow, some tomorrow. Christ who is our life today shall appear tomorrow or some tomorrow. Because my life is hidden with Christ in God, I will appear with Jesus in glory when he appears. This isn't dependent upon my self-holiness. This is part of the gift of salvation that I receive by faith. Thank you, Jesus. Meantime, we will continue seeking the unseen things from above. The unseen from above will today dramatically affect our lives in the realm of the internal and the external, bringing, those, bringing the realm of the unseen into the realm of the seen to be experienced. Father, thank you. Thank you for these words today. You're pointing out to us what has transpired, what you see, and help us to see what you see in and through us as individuals, as a corporate body. And the corporate body worldwide would see themselves as you see them. Father, into your hands, into your care and keeping, we place each one of us. May we just take our hands off and allow your expression through us. In Jesus' name. Amen.